Hello, this is Josh Patel, and welcome to chapter 3, which is all about cell structure and function. Today we are doing chapter 3.1, which is all about cell theory. Our key concept for today is cells are the basic unit of life. So they're like atoms, but for life. Atoms are the basic building block of the world, but cells are the basic unit of life. So the cell theory grew out of the work of many scientists and improvements in the microscope. So as we know, a theory can be improved over time and it explains something. So the cell theory explains all about cells. It's not a law because it doesn't predict anything. And a theory will never become a law. So the cell theory will never become into the cell law. It's always be a theory and it will always be improved as our technology improves. So many scientists contributed to the cell theory. So they're going to show us a few examples of people that help. So we don't need to know like when they're born, when they died, or their birthplace, or anything like that. So Robert Hooke was a philosopher who studied instrumental and scientific revolution. So basically, he was the father of microscope, microscopy for his work in the development of the microscope. So just know he's related to the microscope. And the microscope carried a lot of influence on the development of the cell theory. So he made up the term cell when he was looking at a plant cell because they looked like monks' rooms in a monastery or like little cells. And cell also means room, like a jail cell or something like that. Anton Van Leeuwenhoek, I don't know how you ever want to pronounce that. Born on October 24th, which we don't need to know. We don't need to know his birthplace. We don't need to know when he died. But he is the father of microbiology, best known for his contribu contribution to the improvements of the microscope. So yet yeah, then again, microscope, he improved it. Because microscopes are the only way we can actually see cells. So they had to have microscopes to discover it. First to observe and describe single cell organisms that he first referred to as animalcules. He got this name because he thought they looked like tiny animals, hence the animal part in the word. The cell theory grew out of the work of many scientists and improvements in the microscope. So more was learned about the cell as a microscope improved. So the cell theory is a unifying concept of biology and was developed by these two gentlemen, which we don't need to know. And so now that we're talking about microscopes, we need to, we need to know a few of them. So these are the types of microscopes we need to know, except this one, we don't need to know this one. So like compound light mi microscope, uses light to magnify and it can magnify some can magnify up to 2000 but most only go up to 400 not 500 you use one eye to see some have two so it's just a general description and objects must be thin enough for light light to pass through these are the basic microscopes when we think of when we think of a microscope which are these simple ones that you might have in your class so the next is the transmission electron microscope. So it uses electrons to magnify. It can magnify up to 1 million or it's like the highest you can get. Only makes 2D in images and the object must be thin so the electrons can pass through them. And then there's a scanning electron microscope which uses electrons to magnify a lot also. And it, can ma it makes a 3D image, but your object has to be encased or covered with a certain metal. So this one is very expensive. Another microscope that's not here is the dissecting microscope. And it's used mainly to dissect and look at things that you're dissecting. So it doesn't have a high magnification. Okay, let's get back on track. So early studies led to the development of the cell theory. The cell, cell theory has three main parts which, which we need to remember. 
So part one is all organisms are made of cells. There's no specific order. So just remember all three of these. All organisms are made of cells. So every organism, every living thing has cells. All existing cells are produced by other living cells. So one cell has to come from a cell before it. They don't just spontaneously generate, which means that they just come, pop out of nowhere. So the one cell comes from another. These One of these cells are going through the reproductive phase where it creates an identical copy of it. And the cell is the most basic unit of life. So this is a unicellular organism. It's just one cell and it's a whole living thing. So it's the basic unit of life. Just like an atom is the basic unit of an element or a compound or something. A cell is the basic unit of life. So prokaryotic cells lack a nucleus and most internal structures of eukaryotic cells. So now we're getting into the two types of, there's two main types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So, but they all share certain characteristics. So cells tend to be microscopic. That's why we need microscopes to discover them. That's why we needed microscopes to discover them. And the improvements of the microscope helped us generate more of our theory. So if they ask you what's an important discovery of the development of the cell theory, it's probably going to be microscopes. All cells are enclosed by a membrane. So the outside covering of a cell, which is called the cell membrane, which we will go more into detail in our next check, in our next lesson. All cells are filled with cytoplasm, which is the inside. So we will also learn that in our next lesson. So there are two types, eukaryotic and prokaryotic. So let's go back. Eukaryotic, e, the U is like U, so like Y-O-U. A regular U is Y-O-U. So eukaryotic means you. So we have eukaryotic cells. So since we're complex creatures, we need complex cells. So our cells have everything. They have a nucleus and they have organelles or membrane bound organelles. So eukaryotic cells, this is the nucleus and cell membrane. And all these colorful things inside are the organs, I mean organelles, which are like organs. So pro Prokaryotic cells do not have a membrane-bound organelles or a nucleus. So pro sounds like no, so you can remember no nucleus. Prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, and they do not have membrane-bound organelles, so you can see the difference. This one doesn't have anything on the inside, no nucleus or organelles. So that's the end of today's lesson on chapter 3.1 which it was all about the cell theory hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and if you missed anything make sure you go back and review it our next video will be on chapter 3 which is all about cell structure and function lesson 2 which will be about the organelles in a cell so hope you enjoy this video and good luck on your quest for knowledge